good song from uh, many years ago, Sugar Sugar. Mm. And, uh, the Archies. The Archies, yeah. yeah, the Archies, Sugar Sugar. And, and of course, you know, the dentist, the sugar, and um, you know, the sugar's always activated yeah. dramas with the teeth, hasn't it? <laughs> it surely has. Yeah. And even when they first started looking at the biofilms, they assumed it was more to do with fats rather than sugars. Mm. Uh, but the sugars, of course, feed the bacteria. The bacteria then, of course... Uh, lives in the biofilms and there was even a study going back a couple of years ago which was cool and I know I've mentioned this one over and over yep. again because it was fascinating to me they looked at people with chronic back pain where they'd had back pain for at least 20 years so people who just were not getting results with anything else and they took biopsies of the fluid between the discs in the spine and they found acne bacteria in the spine acne. so stuff and you can imagine with acne bacteria that's all so close to the teeth as well mm. it's all yeah. linked so once again when you sort of start thinking well what's causing my chronic pain what's causing my health issues sometimes we have to sort of backtrack to well when did things start falling apart for you and it can be you know because I always say were you a healthy kid did you have plenty of energy and they say yes or no and sometimes we've taken on our mother's health let's face it and these days they're talking about that first thousand days as being so important for setting up the microbiome, which helps to control the bad effects of the biofilms throughout our body. So it's all linked. Well, what a surprise. Everything in our body is linked. Know, of course it is. Yeah. Uh, just just on, on the acne bacteria, is, is that an infection? Is, is Absolutely. That, it is an infection. Isn't yes, it? yes. So, you know, so that's why when people use things like tea tree oil externally and that type of thing, they tend to get better results. It, of course, stings, you know, because... There's an open wound there. Yeah, but okay. when we're using things that are, say, alcohol wipes and that type of thing, you're just basically cleaning up the skin and helping to stop the bacteria grow. But the skin is, of course, like seven layers deep and the bacteria is coming from inside. So they, have, they haven't they have actually done any studies. Well, none that I've seen, and obviously there's a million things I haven't seen. But I know there was a study done back in the late 60s that was with four groups of men, and it was a terrible study. And dermatologists were still using that as their as their proof that sugar doesn't cause acne, mm -hmm. even going back five, ten years ago. I remember that there was a big study saying sugar does not cause acne, and you just go, really? Mm -hmm. Like I know if I have a big, you know, even you know, even at my age, I know if I have a big weekend, I'm likely to come up with a zit on my chin <laughs> on Monday. It's like, come on. <laughs> Once you get to my age, you don't have zits. You're, you're, you're all zitted, zitted out. All zitted out. <laughs> so, yeah, but the jaw is something that's really fascinating to me. So thinking dental work, because going back 20 years ago when I learned NOT, NOT is Neural Organisational Technique. So once again, Linda, my mate from last week, her and I both studied it at the same time. So we first started with Trevor Savage, who's been a local kinesiologist who brought NOT into Australia 30 years ago. And we both studied it with him and then we went to study with the guy, the guru himself, Dr. Carl Ferrari. And between and that process just can really change people's uh, their way of thinking. So a lot of my clients, they don't think of me as a naturopath alone. They really do sort of, oh, well, and I hate to put myself on this pedestal, but they think of me as a bit of a guru because they know that I have done so much extra. It's not just naturopathy we do in our clinic. So as soon as someone starts coming in and they say, I've got headaches and migraines and jaw pain, I'm thinking, jaw, well, what have you done? You know, has there been any anaesthetics? Has there been a head injury? Has there been an old whiplash or a car accident or a motorbike accident? You know, what has happened that's actually started to trigger that along? And I do exactly the same process in my brain for chronic fatigue or cancer or fibromyalgia, it doesn't matter what it is. Something has always triggered things, always. But you think about it, that's good for your patients because if they think to look upon you as the guru to them, then you're, you're their healer. Yeah. They're, they're going to go away a lot more positive as well. Yeah, and I can often sort of work out whether or not, well, okay, go to the dentist, get this sorted, and then, and, and some people, let's face it, some people don't want to take the things like antibiotics because they know they'll get side effects and they can't take it because they get... There are, a lot of people are allergic to penicillins and those sort of medications, so they simply can't do it. So when we sort of... And that's a good thing naturopathically. There's a lot of things these days that are nearly as strong as many medications, so we can offer those alternatives for sensitive people. And once again, if someone knows that they, say, have... You know, like, just say I'm someone who every time I put earrings in, I get rashes on my ears. I know there's going to be some sort of metal sensitivity. So if you're deciding from your orthodontist whether you're going to go stainless steel teeth or whether you're going to go plastic, sorry, sorry, braces, braces then yeah. you might be better off choosing dependent on what the kinesiology muscle tests if you know you're sensitive. 
if you know what I mean. So yeah. kinesiology can actually help to determine whether or not someone's going to have an issue with, you know, the titanium implants or the stainless steel or the plastic or the glues in the plastic or, the, you know, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, it goes on from there. That yeah. We're not happy with it. Yeah. Course. And one, and I know I mentioned this earlier on, and I know it's a little controversial, but one of the things that we see in our oligo scan, so it's a heavy metal and mineral scanning process that we do, so it's a, it's a test that's from Europe that's been in Australia maybe for about five years now. Uh, basically, we find high mercury levels a lot of the time. And it's one of those things going back in dentistry 30, 40, 50 years ago, they believed that mercury fillings were inert. So that once they were in the teeth, they deal that didn't really cause any problems. But over decades, it's sort of been found that they do sort of leach that little bit of mercury into our system. Um, and, and funnily enough, it's every time we either add pressure to it, so eating, or um, hot. So any time we have a cup of tea or coffee, so it's heat and pressure that cause the mercury in some people to be released. And it's normal, it's pretty hard to avoid, isn't it? Absolutely. And then thinking about chronic fatigue... Chronic fatigue, you know, your poor old cells just are not creating enough energy for us to get through the day. One of the things that's, so one of our energy molecules is called ATP. ATP is adenotriphosphate. But basically that little molecule requires lots of things, but including magnesium. Now, when we've got too much mercury in the system, the mercury binds with the magnesium and stops us making ATP. It totally neutralizes it, so we're not getting any energy out of our out of our high magnesium foods, out of our magnesium supplements, because mercury will bind to magnesium. So therefore, you know, you need to both do two things simultaneously, really up your magnesium levels, but also detoxify the mercury. So there are substances that really help to do that, because some people are taking oodles of magnesium, mm. but they're still getting things like headaches or cramps or, you know, mm. sort of things that are very specific magnesium deficiencies, and you think, well, there's got to be another trigger. So what's going yeah. on in the I've system there? I've got a friend there? of mine that can't take magnesium, obviously, for what reasons I'm not, I'm not a medical person, can, can magnesium have a, an effect on the system and the body? There are many different types of magnesium and it depends what type as to what symptom they're getting. So for example, if you're getting a magnesium that's called an amino acid chelate, going back 20 years ago, chelates were a really good form of magnesium because what it is, it's a magnesium molecule that's surrounded by basically like a little balloon that then doesn't open up until you're in the small intestine. So the idea then it would break apart and you'd get your magnesium through the gut. Uh, the problem with that is that, once again, with our laws in Australia, they don't have to say what type of magnesium it is. So depending on the quality of the company you're buying it from, they might be using something like, say, magnesium oxide. Now, magnesium oxide is used to make us go to the toilet. If you take a big scoop of magnesium oxide, you will be in the toilet within 20 mm -hmm. minutes. Really? So, you know, there, there are some sort of magnesiums that some people get diarrhea, uh, and that's a big thing, or they'll get like bloating, burping, belching. It's because it's oxidizing in the gut. So once again, it depends on what type. And some are just too strong for people because magnesium will also cause, um, no, not cause, but if it gets the mitochondria and the cells churning, so making more energy, causing more detoxification processes, if your body isn't ready for detoxifying, it doesn't matter. You know, it's sort of like you have to do it gently. And that's where you have to know your clients. You know, some, like I can take horse doses of anything. You know, I never, I never, I, I know I do. I do take lots of stuff. But it's, but, you know, once again, my friend Linda, you know, there's some things that she could not take to save herself. You know, it would really cause big detoxification yeah. in, in her body that would make her crazy. But so, yeah, so there's absolutely many different types of magnesium and it depends what they're using it for and what type they need. So the best one for the heart is magnesium orotate. The best one for individual cells is either a magnesium diglycinate or a magnesium citrate. So really, it depends on the person. Okay, Good old... Um, magnesium orotate. Orotate for the heart, okay, yeah. Okay, sure. uh, but when you're looking at, say... Oh, but then again, people often come in and once again, the body will use what it's got. So even mm -hmm. if you're taking a crappy form but your body is still getting less headaches and less cramps, hey, your body's using what it can. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your body will always do the best with what it's got. Yeah. Yeah. All right, interesting stuff. Yeah, um, so when we, yeah, so sort of, so that's sort of dental stuff. And I was also thinking, you know, with the acupuncture, mm -hmm. you know, how many people out there giant, grind their jaw and clench their teeth? Now, this is something, once again, I don't think of the jaw as just the jaw as just, just the jaw. So if you think of, the tailbone for a sec, and the dura, so that goes around the spinal cord, so it attaches to the tailbone, it goes up the spinal cord, it attaches at C3 on the side of the necks, it attaches in the tip of the skull, the side of the eyes, and then down to the jaw. 
So if you're clenching your jaw, grinding your teeth, it's not just about your jaw. It's often about your body having an underlying fight or flight response going on to something. And how many people don't do it during the day and they do it at night time? <laughs> they wake up with aching jaw because they're, you know, so their subconscious brain is not happy and relaxed while they're sleeping. It's keeping them protected. It's keeping them safe. It really is about survival. So it's not just about getting a splint in your mouth, although splints will save your teeth. You know, I'm not saying don't do splints. But the underlying cause is much deeper than that. And once again, what causes and triggers the body to go into some sort of survival pattern? Yeah. It's that type of thing where everyone has a different trigger. The trigger's never the same, and that's why you need someone to work with who can help it out, you know, for you to really start sorting that. So where did your fear of the dentist come from, just by the way? Well, when I said uh, we were young and we were dragged up to the dentist, we were, for some reason or other, and, but, but it was the drill. The drills were very old-fashioned. Oh, back right, okay. You've got to remember I'm sort of... Uh, at that um, serious age now, and the, the drills were terrible. They, yeah. they, had, they had like pulley ropes, little small elastic pulley ropes yeah. on them, and I haven't even had a feeling there was one they actually used with their foot, so yeah. but the involvement of dentists has Absolutely. changed so much. I mean, and I think, I yeah, know. and I know that uh, in my family, and I said this once again when I had my uh, foot cut open last year, you know, I was terrified of the anaesthetic because we also have something in our DNA that does not allow anaesthetics to work. So exactly. I've seen it with my mum, I've seen it with my son, and, you know, so that's one of my fears as well, is not just needing one, but seven. Yeah. You know, it often doesn't work. Yeah, well, we're going to run out of time. We're heading towards the news, and I've got a couple of commitments to clear. Yeah. And so thanks, Madonna, for um, joining me in, in a little chat about dental and yeah. your own stuff as well. And look forward to maybe chatting with you again next week. Absolutely. Thanks, Madonna. Take it nice and easy. Have a great weekend. You too. At the Proof Fence in 10 Canoes, on the That's big the screen at Rouse Performing Arts Centre on Saturday, June 2nd, this is the first...